Okay, we are back. How long has it taken? Her? Oh, so we're probably from Saber's perspective. 99.999% sure that's what's happening because we got kidnapped and then it started an interlude. So yeah, we are back. How long has it taken her to notice that something is wrong? She wakes up to a strange feeling and goes out into the hallway. Shiro? The first thing that... The first... The... The first thinks that the feeling... Wait, oh, she... F <laughs> I just can't read. She first thinks that the feeling might be coming from her master. It is because that strange feeling is coming from Amiya Shiro's room. Jeez, is he still training magic? The, go the golden-haired girl Saber sighs. It's good that he's enthusiastic, but he will collapse unless he rests while he can. And when she decides to go warn him, she realizes her own mistake. She gasps after confirming it. The strange feeling isn't coming from Shiro's room. Under the moonlight, a string, thin as her hair, runs through the darkness. The string is going to Shiro's room from outside. A thin string that even the boundary field here did not catch. If one is to give praise to the one who pulled off such a thing, one also needs to give praise to Saber for noticing such a thing. There's no time to think. The girl turns into a knight in an instant and runs outside. She runs through the empty town. There's no hesitation in Saber as she runs. She knows where she must go. She only needs to follow the string, the, be the beat of her master. The only thing is, she has to do... The only thing she has to do is to run as fast as she can. It makes no difference whether her destination is the enemy's territory, nor how many traps might await her. She has sworn to protect her master, so anything that might befall her is negligible. It is a mountain stained with vast amounts of magical energy. Ghosts of the dead are flying above like crows, and the trees are covered with invisible blood. The collected magical energy, the stolen souls, remain here, and the mountains should, be con should consume anyone that may approach it. If there, is a th if there is such a thing as a place to die, this place is a perfect example. She goes in without hesitation. She had no intention to stop from the start. If this place is hell, she has to save her master all the more. She runs at the stone steps. The trap she had anticipated are not there. The mountain gate is within her view, and she should, and she should reach it with one more kick from her magical energy-filled legs. But her advance stops right there. No, it is stopped by the enemy. On the stairs leading to the mountain gate stands a servant. His name is Sasaki Kojiro, the servant assassin, the protector of Ryodo Temple, wielding the longsword... Monoho Shizo Shizao. Oh yeah, they already did. They already meet in this route, and because there was the night, didn't, wasn't there a night where Saber went out on her own again? It's been so long since I've recorded any of this, which means it's been even longer. Like it's been so long since I've uploaded any of this, which means it's been so much longer since I've actually recorded any of this. But I'm pretty sure that has happened, where she went out at night, and then he clapped her cheeks really hard. Saber's mind is stern as she raised her invisible air. Her master's on the other side of the mountain gate. But the servant in front of her is way too strange. He reveals his true name willingly. He does not have a stance, and his cool enmity is transparent. She cannot figure out his power because of his transparency. She can see his powers as a servant. Assassin is not a strong servant, so it should be easy to defeat him. Her instincts are telling her something different, that she cannot beat him in a normal duel. I do not have any business with you. Move, Assassin. She, she suppresses the strange unease and glares at Assassin. There's only one more step until they are both within, within range, up or down. If either one moves, a fatal attack should be executed. Did you not hear me? I told you to move, Assassin. Her final warning. The swordsman with a longsword calmly responds, responds to her words. I see. So you would like to pass this, pass this mountain gate, Saber. Her green eyes glare at Assassin for asking such a foolish question. He must like the answer. The longsword dances through the night and in an arc. Then, force your way through. You should hurry, or your master's life will be gone. He laughs in a cool manner. Assassin! Or was that in the fate route when that happened? I think it might have been the fate route where they fought. Yeah, 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 it was. Because that was the only time he appeared in the fate route, was it not? Don't remember. I believe it. I believe it was. Saber charges in reply. The longsword comes down at her at the same moment, 
and she repels it with her invisible sword. The clash of the swords echoes through the summit. Their powers are equal, but that is not an advantage for her. She is impatient, and the enemy she, she bleh, the enemy she must defeat quickly is a strong one that would be hard to beat even without any time constraints. Shiro, please. She grits her, she grits her teeth and prays in her head. That opening, that excess part of her, is permeating her body. The battle does not end. The mountain gate is too far away. Interlude out. Castra extends her fingers. Damn. I want to fight back, but my body will not move. My senses are taken away, and I'm sure she will eliminate my body in a matter of seconds. Sayonara. Goodbye, boy. If you're going to mourn, mourn that you became a master with such small skills. My body does not move and accepts the finger of death. I resist the urge to close my eyes and keep glaring at Castor. Wow, you are such a good boy. I like such good efforts. Castor sneers at my resistance and puts her fingers on my command spell. Oh, even my free will is numbing. In my fading consciousness, clang. I hear a sound like crashing swords from the other side of the mountain gate. What happened? Okay. <laughs> What kind of, I, there was a, definitely a moment there where I thought the game crashed. I'm not going to lie. What kind of miracle is it? I hear tens of sounds cutting through the air and numerous arrows pierce the ground in front of me. Castor instantly retreats, her robe fluttering behind her. What? There are arrows pierced in the ground in front of Castor. The 13 arrows were shot from above. They were probably all shot at the same time, and I'm sure it would have gotten Castor if there had been one more arrow. The owner of the arrows is standing on top of the mountain gate. The knight in red jumps down to the ground, empty-handed. <laughs> I thought you'd be dead by now, but I guess you're pretty tenacious. The man, Archer says so while standing in front of me, as if to protect me from Castor. You? Why? I just happened to drop by. Don't worry about it. So, how's your body? I should have cut Castor's string with that attack. Huh? After he says so, I check my hand. It moves. My frozen body has its freedom returned with just one attack by Archer. It moves. Castor's binding is gone, but... That's good. Do what you want now, or so I would like to say. But, do not move if you don't want to be killed by her. If you move recklessly... <laughs> Archer! What is Assassin doing? See? She'll take out her anger on you. A woman's fury is hard to control. Man, I think this will get rough. Well, don't get too mad, Caster. Assassin is fighting Saber right now. I do not know who that samurai is, but he's a strong swordsman to keep Saber at bay. Should you not praise him instead? Even though he's facing his enemy, there's no tension in Archer. Caster must have noticed that as well, as she regains her calm. <laughs> stop with the ridiculous talk. You cannot call him a heroic spirit if he cannot stop you. He is not strong enough to be called a swordsman. Oh, you sound like Assassin is your ally. So, your masters must be cooperating. There's no other explanation to this situation of having two servants in the same place. Yeah, literally, no other explanation for having many servants in one place. That could only that could be the only explanation. Castor is, is staring at Archer silently. I can't see her expression hidden behind the robe. But it seems Castor is bewildered. Is that true, Archer? That Saber's here and fighting a servant assassin? And that Assassin's Master and Castor's Master are cooperating? Yes, Assassin is guarding outside the gate, and Castor is hiding behind the gate. It is obvious that they are cooperating. It is not rare for Masters to team up. You and Ren are cooperating, to give an example. Oh, he is right now that he mentions it. Then that means there are two Masters here. I was wondering what you were going to say, but you are so off, Archer. Hmm? Oh, was I wrong? Man, I was confident that you two are allies. Yes, you are terribly wrong. Allies? I would cooperate with that dog? With that man under my... With the man that's under my control? Castor does not stop laughing. Her laugh is, un is so unsuitable that the tense atmosphere disperses. In contrast, Archer is gritting his teeth. I sense something that was not there before. Is not Castor's anonymity, 
nor the magical energy surrounding this place. For the first time since he came to this place, Archer is showing his anonymity. Yes, your guess is correct, Archer. My master is not cooperating with anybody, and the same goes for Assassin's master. No, first of all, Assassin does not have a master. What? Assassin doesn't have a master? What does that mean? Every servant needs a master to exist. Weren't they supposed to disappear if they didn't have a supply of magical energy from their master? Caster, you broke the rule? Of course not. I haven't broken the rule. Magi summoned the servants, right? Then what is wrong with Caster, a Magi summoning a servant? The witch in the black robe laughs. That means... Servant Assassin is a heroic spirit summoned by Caster. A servant who controls a servant, huh? I see. That is why he is a fictional hero. As Assassin was summoned by an improper master, someone other than the proper Assassin was summoned. I don't mind. I don't mind that. It doesn't concern me who the heroic spirit is, as I only need to defeat them. But I'm sure that this is all under your judgment, is it not? Let me ask you, how did you arrive at that conclusion, Archer? Oh, it's just a hunch. Masters are Magi. When a Magi summons a familiar that is superior to him, I'm sure their relationship isn't that of a servant and master. It is only natural for the master to be on his guard against a familiar of greater power. If I were your master, I would not give any freedom to a witch. There is no way he would allow you to summon a servant that would, o that would only obey your orders. <laughs> it seems we have some intelligence. Alright, I shall dismiss your insult and deference to your cleverness. Caster glares at Archer as she laughs. There is only enmity between the two now. Enmity. I need to get better at pronouncing that word because it's used a lot in the... Uh in this visual novel. They're about seven meters apart. With the chart with the chart that Archer showed at school, he should be able to slash cast her even well, even before she can finish casting a spell. I understand now. Saber, Lancer and Rider, has strong magic resistance. It is on a different level from this guy behind me. It's hard to affect them with magic, therefore you cannot match them, since you are a Magus. Then it is only natural for you to resort to to resort to tactics. You broke the rules of summon servant assassin. You broke the rules of summon servant assassin. You created your territory here and collected souls from the people in this town. You don't fight yourself and merely observe the progress of the war. You go so far, so I assume you must have your master restrained. I'm sure he's a puppet like the stupid master here. She smiles. That sends a chill up my spine. She's not only collecting magical energy from the pre from the people in town. She's even treating her master as an object, like she treated me. You know, with Caster, most people would be okay with that. Caster's dangerous. She's not a pure threat like Berserker, but she must be the most troublesome enemy as, she's, as she worsens the situation without showing herself. As she worsens the situation without showing herself. Yes, you're right, Archer. But you're wrong if you think I'll be no match for you. It's easy for me to win the Holy Grail War. I'm working hard because I'm thinking about what comes after. I'm not working out a strategy in fear of you people. Oh, so you say it's easier to fear servants. Well said for a witch that only runs away. I did say so. I'm stronger than anyone here. Saber and Berserker aside, you shouldn't even be able to scratch me. You should be the one thinking about running away. I did not forgive you the, f the I did forgive you the first time, but there won't be a second time. I will give an appropriate punishment to those who call me a witch. Caster's robe distorts. The magical energy in the air becomes a dense fog and covers Caster's body. With it in front of him. This shall be interesting, so you say I can't even put a scratch on you. Archer murmurs in delight. Yes, you will not even be able to touch me. The black shadow answers. The knight in red laughs. Then I shall try once. If I cannot accomplish it in one try, I will entrust Saber with this task. And I think I'm actually going to end the episode there, just so that the fight can be all of next episode. Just because the fights of this are cool, and like they don't, I don't want to have to rush through it because my voice is already giving out. The way I was planning to record these was record three, take a break to do something else like some chores and whatnot, since I need to do a lot of cleaning. With the fight coming up, I don't want to have to rush through it at all. So, with that being said, oh gosh, it's been so long since I recorded any of these. My voice is not like I used to be able to record like six of these, not all back to back to back, but you know, like three, take a small break then another three, and then my voice would start to give out. But it's been so long that only after three, and three shorter episodes than I usually do, my voice is already like, please, please stop. I can't do any more voices, please stop. 
So yeah, with that being said, I'm going to go take a break so then we can do the next episode. So with that being said, I'll see y'all y'all then. Bye bye Okay, um, we are back with some more fate. I cut off the last one right before the fight started, so uh, like a cool guy. So let's just get into it. He sprints like the wind to cast her. The red shadow runs. I don't know when he got them, but in Archer's hands are those weapons, those twin swords. He does not allow time for... Why is there no music? He does not allow time for any spell casting. Archer closes in on Caster even before she can raise her hand. Oh, there we go. Sounds. And he slashes Caster in half with his swords. The robe cut in half scatters in the wind. Hmm? Archer appears disappointed, standing in front of the enemy he slashed so easily. It must be because it was so easy. She talked so big, yet she lost without even attacking him once. Anybody would lose their spirit. Archer is still holding on to his swords. His red clothing. His black and white short, short swords are beautiful, and they captivate me. This is strange. Am I captivated by those swords? Those twin swords. They must be great swords with history, but I feel no malice from them. Noble phantasms are excellent weapons, so it's natural that they are beautiful. If I could see Saber's sword, I bet it would be magnificent. But they're not like that. Fighting spirit that indeed that intends to beat others. Desire to be famous. Competitive spirit that tries to beat another weapon. Faith to accomplish some great deed. The senses of purpose found in famous swords and demonic swords are not in these. They, are, they were made because somebody wanted to make them. Unrefined twin swords, made without a will, as if to question the meaning of the swordsmith. I think those swords are like that. Mirrored swords without vanity. Black and white. Strange swords that represent yin and yang. I am captivated because their existence is just too beautiful. Caster's slashed body disappears. As Archer starts to put his weapons away after seeing it. Too bad, Archer. I did not think you were that weak. Caster's voice echoes through the empty temple. Archer jumps. This is exactly like what happened here a while ago. The light bullets appear from the sky to pierce Archer, and Archer knocks them down with his swords. No, this isn't like before. What? The ground is scorching red. The magical energy in that small light is about three times my full magical energy. Even Archer would have had his body blown away if he took a direct hit. I look up. There's no moon and seas of clouds are drifting through the night sky. The black magus floats in the middle, as if raining over the heavens. It must be the transportation or control of matter. Either way, it seems you can do something... Oh, this is Archer. It must be transportation or control of matter. Either way, it seems you can do something close to sorcery in this territory. I have a better opinion of you now, Caster. Well, no wonder you, you can talk big. Archer readies his swords while looking up at Caster. Really? But you let me down, Archer. I tested you since I thought you might come in handy, but you're below assassin if that's the result. Oh, that hurts. I can try to do better if that there is a next time. Of course not. Fools do not get a second chance. You will die here, Archer. Damn. Archer starts off. He sprints to get away from Caster to get out of this place. Do you think you can get away? Caster moves her wand. After the wand targets Archer, something ridiculous happens before me. Nobody can hear me say no way. Caster's attack is a rain without pause. The shooting lights are no different from a bombing raid. Each magic is a deadly attack, and Caster is shooting them off like rain. I may be an amateur, but even I can understand how ridiculous this magic is. There's, that's more like great magic. To activate it, one needs a simple magic circle and, t and a ten count. A spell casting of more than ten years. Of ten verses. Why did I say years? Ugh. Because great magic is strong, casting it takes time. A normal Magus would take about a minute to cast such a, a big magic. Even a Magus that could use high-speed casting would take 30 seconds or so. But she did it in an instant. She didn't even cast a spell, but just pointed her wand, and she's shooting them off in rapid succession. I can't even think of someone who could compare with her.
You fox. You must have stored huge amounts of, en of energy, shooting that many A-rank spells in succession. He must not be able to avoid them anymore, as he runs while deflecting them with his swords. Archer tries to run out of the temple, but he changes his course midway. You idiot! How long are you going to just stand there? Archer charges at me with, with a scary expression. Huh? That makes me realize. The place I'm standing isn't safe at all now. I'm already in range of the shooting lights. Damn, why do I have to do such a thing? Archer comes at me. The instant I try to avoid him by jumping back, my body is flying through the air. Huh? I try to shake him off with reflex. I can't believe it. Archer's running while carrying me. Let me down, you idiot! What the hell are you thinking? I don't know, just shut up, you idiot! I'll get a headache thinking about how stupid I am if you tell me about it. Idiot? You know, you're an idiot! You still call me an idiot, you idiot? Are you a kid or something? You can't be helped if you're a kid and stupid. At least pick one, you idiot. Archer must be frantic, as his words make no sense. I've been saved by him, but I just can't accept this. You- just let go of me, I can take care of this myself, I don't need your help! No more than that. No, more than that, I can't stand to be a burden on him. Archer should have been able to escape by now if he were by himself. But the exit is further now that he came to save me. He must be an easy target for Caster, as she is above us. Archer, are you listening to me? I see, then I guess I don't need to hold back. Then, Archer suddenly calms down and kicks me off of him. My body hits the ground. He must have kicked me hard as I fly at least five meters. You. I bear my pain and get back up. Huh? Archer has stopped. The shooting lights have stopped as well. The only thing here is the freezing air. Hey. I finally notice. Archer's surroundings have stopped as if everything is frozen. How do you feel, Archer? Even a knight cannot move and if space itself is frozen, right? Caster sounds, if, uh, Caster sounds as if she's already won. Archer does not move at all. Archer does not move at all, and maybe he can't even talk. I guess this is it. Saber is outside, so I don't have time to waste on you. I don't know which hero you were, but this is goodbye for you. Caster raises her left arm. Her hands shoot the bullets of light. But right before that... Archer murmurs something. What is it? If you are begging for your life, I might just listen. I said... Caster. He sounds irritated, when I try hard to catch his voice. Idiot! I said dodge it, Caster! Archer jumps as he yells. He must have broken the frozen space with his powers. He must have broken the frozen space with his powers. Archer disappears from our vision, leaving a sound like breaking glass behind him. What? what are... Caster is perplexed by Archer's scream, and to the right and left of her, a white and black light are aiming for, a for Caster. Caster's robe is cut off. It must be because Caster's reacted to Archer's yell, as she managed to, manages to narrowly avoid the attacks. It does not need to be said, but the thing attacking her are Ar Archer's twin swords. At that instant, Archer threw his swords right before he kicked me and fell into Caster's spell. The, ca the, cast, the, the cast swords made an arc and attacked Archer Caster in the air. The, I am, my mind is all over the place today. As, even though this is literally the same day as the last set of episodes. As expected of Archer, huh? Wait, where is he? I'm speechless for sure this time. It must be the same for Caster. The knight in red already has Caster in a checkmate. He has his knee on the ground and is readying his bow towards the sky. His target is Caster. And the arrow on it is, demon is, that the, is the demonic sword that shot Berserker. I am the bone of my sword. Archer's voice shakes the air. Caster yells a spell in a rush. Seeing it... Kaladbog. Archer shoots his arrow. Is that his noble phantasm? The arrow distorts space itself, showing off the whirlwind in its path. Caster's moaning fills the air. The storm-like arrow has easily penetrated Caster's defense. Guessing from that distortion in space, I bet Caster would have been twisted along with the space itself even if can even if can caster had been tra uh, even if caster had transported herself Blah. but caster's still alive her black robe is scattered and the body underneath the robe is cut up 
Castra is using all her magical energy to heal herself, but I'm sure she would have died instantly if it were a direct hit. That's right. Archer's arrow did not hit her. The arrow was shot into space far from Caster, and she had her protection des destroyed by the after effect. The arrow missed. No, that's wrong. It did not miss. It missed on purpose. I don't know what his intentions are. It was a big chance, but Archer missed Caster on purpose. Silence returns to the temple. In front of me are Archer and Caster, who's glaring at Archer. It must have been a lot for him, as I only feel a weak magical energy from Archer now. That goes for Caster as well. Even though it did not hit her, Archer's shot has taken away most of Caster's body and her magical energy. Even if there is a big pool of magical energy here, it's meaningless if what collects the energy Caster is da- If what collects the energy, Caster is damaged. Caster comes down without spirit. She managed to form her body, but there's nothing inside. It should be impossible for her to continue fighting. Caster watches us while breathing heavily. I don't know why, but she's looking at both the servant that brought her down and at me. Archer, why did you not hit me with that shot? She a oh, well that was a little too aggressive for her being a weak voice. She asks in a weak voice. Archer shrugs as if saying that question is a wonder itself. Well, I told you I'd try only once. My first attack was avoided. Everything else was unnecessary. Or what? Did you want me to break my promise and hit you? He says such a ridiculous thing. Then you had no intention of killing me? I only responded to your provocation. My objective is that man over there. I didn't intend to fight another servant. Hmm. You certainly didn't have any will to fight from the beginning. I see. It does not look like you came here to fight me, Archer. Nope. It's just like that chicken over there. I try to avoid meaningless battles. I only use my sword at perfect opportunities. And only when I, s when I can swear a sure kill. I don't like killing meanis meaninglessly. What's so funny? Castro laughed from the bottom of her heart. I see. Then you two are alike. Huh? We reply in unison. Alike me and Archer? What makes her say that? Am I wrong? You both do not like meaningless killings, right? That boy over there cannot stand a servant like me who feeds on innocent people. You don't like me meaningless killings. See? It's exactly the same. Is that not why you two are cooperating? You idiot, how can you reach that conclusion? Who would ally with such a guy? I feel the same way. We are both pacifists where our principles are different. It is my principle to take care of problems early on. I do not ponder forever like this man. That's a really good line for like his whole character, actually. What do you mean by a pacifist? I still remember. You shot at Saber along with Berserker, even though you were hiding in a safe place while Saber was fighting. It couldn't be helped. We were not cooperating back then. It's just that defeating Berserker came before Saber's safety. Or what? Don't tell me to save everyone I see. Don't tell me to save everyone I see. If that is the case, Berserker would have to, would have to be saved as well, and I would not be able to fight him. We glare at one another. Man, I just can't get along with him. Why does everything he says get on my nerves? Then, Castro laughs even more seeing us like that. I like you two. Your powers and how you two exist are rare. It would be a dis it would be disappointing to make you two my enemies. I tilt my head in wonder. Archer looks away from me and glares at Castor. Hold on, what do you want to say? Can you not tell? I'm telling you to ally with me. I can provide you two with better partners. I can give you a bo I can give you, boy, a servant superior to Saber. I can give you, Archer, a contract with the Maga superior to your master. My mind freezes. I question her sanity for asking such a question. It can't be a bad proposal. I told you two that I'm prepared to end this war, and winning is easy. How about it? Should you not cooperate with me? If it, should you not cooperate with me if you want to survive? I do not even need to think about it. I decided to fight since I want to stop people like her, who would involve innocent people. So I can never accept her offer. I refuse. I won't ally with a witch like you. I declare so. This is so. This is a natural response. I can't cooperate with this servant, and more than anything, we won't betray our partners. I'll be fighting with Saber, and Archer will not do anything to betray Tosaka. Wait, why is he silent? Hey, Archer. I refuse. There's no reason for me to need your power. Before anything, your territory is too weak. No matter how strong it may be, it is still not stronger than Berserker. Is not good enough condition to accept your offer. 
I sigh with relief. I had a bad feeling, but he's not like that. I hate him, but he's still firm on his beliefs. I see. So, there's no negotiation. No, but I have no intention of fighting you here. It's by my own choice that I'm here. It's not my master's orders, so there's no reason for me to defeat you. How about we call this a draw? Huh? I doubt my own ears. Did he just say he'd let Castor go? That's unexpected. Your master was after me, right? But you're saying you'll let me go? Yes, I don't care how many people you kill here. It's something I'll ignore. Oh, how terrible of you. You think poison has its uses. My master isn't that enthusiastic about killing other masters. So it'll help me if you kill other masters. We can settle our match after that. Castor must have accepted this as she turns around. Hold on, Castor! I run to Castor who's about to disappear, but Archer stops me. Are you stupid? You'll surely die if you follow her. He sounds calm. It's so true that I want to vomit from anger. I stop. Castor's black robe flutters in the wind and disappears. Okay, well, that looks like a good place to end the episode. So, I will see all of you lovely people in the next one. Bye bye Okay, we be back. In the last one, we, uh, far- our, uh, Arch I keep messing up. For some reason, I can't say Caster or Archer. It's just- <laughs> Anyways, um, she left. <laughs> I'm so bad at intros. I'm so bad at doing these now. It's been so long. How long has it been? I think I finished Resident Evil 2 and 3 remake. I finished the rest of Resident Evil 8 that I hadn't finished. Then I played all of Sonic Frontiers and the Resident Evil 8 DLC. All in the time between, like, between the last time I recorded this. I'm so bad at it now. Anyways, Castor has disappeared. Only Archer and I remain here. His figure just gets on my nerves. Archer has saved me twice already. Castor would have taken my command spell without him. I'm sure I would have died from that rain of light. But this is different. I can't forgive him for letting Castor go. Archer, why did you let Castor go? It's because now is not the time to go fight her. Even if I did attack her, she would have just run away. Don't tell me you did not see her teleport. That's certainly true. We wouldn't be able to get Castor if she really wanted to get away. After all, this is her territory. It's that witch. Even if she may have been weak, I'm sure she had at least one or two more tricks left up her sleeve. It seems you understand now. If we want to defeat Castor, we have to defeat her master. Even if she can teleport away, she will eventually disappear if we defeat her, ma if we defeat her master. Going after the master and not the servant. That's the correct and the safest that's the correct and the safest approach to the Holy Grail War. I know that, but you're going to let her get away? The in the incidents in town are all her doing. There will be more victims until we stop Castor. I can't ignore her and let her be. Why? It's not something that is harmful to you. Actually, I'd like for her to continue. Castor will keep up sucking magical energy and eventually defeat Berserker. We can defeat Castor after that. Rena and I can defeat Castor, but not Berserker. I'll let Castor do as she wishes until she defeats Berserker. My body heats up. I get so pissed off that I want to punch Archer. Don't be ridiculous! Tosaka won't do such a thing! You're right. That's why I want Caster to do so as fast as possible. We can't avoid fighting if Reen finds Caster. It would be ideal if Caster can defeat Berserker right before that happens. I don't know how many people will be sacrificed, but it should be cheap if Berserker can be defeated. Humans die anyway. It will not change the ultimate result no matter how they die. Caster's too re reserved. She should not take the. She should not only take their magical energy, but their lives as well. It'll be easier for me to fight if everybody in this town dies. My master's too optimistic. If that happens, I'm sure she'll do anything to win. The knight in red states with a smile. He says it with the light, with the pe that the people are here are only a bother. He's saying the same thing Castor said. Oh, I think I know that Rain's the type that is concerned for, with. Oh, I think you know that Reen's the type that, that is concerned with formality. She's great as a Magus, but she's not dirty enough as a master. I wouldn't be this troubled if she would be more like Castor. You. 
I punch at Archer's face. Of course it does not hit as Archer avoids it without trouble. What are you doing? I thought we were cooperating. Shut up! I'm not like you. I can't sacrifice people around me to win. I feel the same way, Hemiashiro. But you cannot save everyone. For example, the damage will extend beyond this town if Castro obtains the Holy Grail. That goes for Iliasfil and the other masters. As far as I know, you and Rain are the only masters that will not use the Holy Grail for your own good. Therefore, there will be more victims unless we win the Holy Grail War. In that case, we will sacrifice the people in this town for our benefit. It will be exactly as you want if the damage reduced, is reduced as a result. My head is numb. He doesn't even need to tell me that. One cannot save everyone. Kuritsugu always said that, so I shouldn't feel anything even if he says so. But it just pisses me off. You said you do not want to, want to involve innocent people, right? Then accept it. Nobody can be saved if you try to save everybody. As Castor said, we are similar. Unfortunately. We would have to cooperate if we do not want any victims. No. I won't cooperate with you. I will never accept you. I see. You only trust Reen after all. I turn my back to Archer. I'm different from him. If I can't ignore Castor, there's only one thing I need to do. Do not tell me you'll go after Castor. I ignore him and keep walking. I'm heading inside the temple. Since this is Castor's territory, her since this is Castor's territory, her workshop has to be inside the temple somewhere. I can't believe it. You cannot match Castor by yourself. You should stop if you don't want to die. Archer follows me, as if he has more to say. Man, are you going to throw away the life that I've saved? I don't mind, but at least thank me before you die. I helped you out of kindness. I won't ask you to treat me like your savior, but at least thank me like a friend. Man, he's really getting on my nerves. Shut up. I won't feel any friendship towards you. Just go back to Tosaka's place. I won't ask for your help, even if you offer it to me. I look away and walk towards the temple again. There? I see. Good thing you don't like me. A chilling intent to kill comes from behind me. What? I jump back as I turn around. At the same time, Archer swings his sword. I'm cut at my shoulder. My blood comes flowing out and my consciousness will fade if I let my guard down. The pain is so sharp that it feels like my body is burning. I back up with wobbling steps. It's not to run away. I just don't have any power, so my feet move back to try to keep my body upright. Y you I missed, huh? It must have been my mistake in letting out my intent to kill. Or it must have been your cleverness in jumping back instantly. Well, I don't care either way. Archer walk towards, walks towards me with a sword wet with my blood. I'll be killed. I feel that I'll be killed, so I move my feet in desperation. The temple's exit. I slowly retreat, trying to make my way to the mountain gate. He must know this is a fatal wound. Archer walks towards me without hurry. My mind's fading. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm heading to the mountain gate. I don't know why I was attacked. My mind is flowing out with, along with my blood. Maybe I'm still conscious because of the swords he's holding. The white sword short, short sword. The plain swords are captivating my eyes, and they are stopping me from closing them. But it comes to an end. The mountain gate is beyond me when I realize. Even though the steps are somewhere behind me, I can't even turn around. It's because Archer will slash. It's because Archer will slash Amyashiro's body in half the moment I turn my back. This is it. Since you do not have a reason to fight, die here. He raises his sword. The white yin sword is raised like a guillotine. What? Reason to fight? That's right. It is only hypocrisy for you to fight for someone else and not yourself. You only wish for peace and not victory. Such a thing does not exist anywhere in this world. What? I oppose Archer's words and my fading consciousness, but my body and mind are about to disappear. Farewell. Drown in your ideals and die. His voice is filled with hatred. He swings the yin sword, Bakuya. He aims for the wound on my shoulder to cut my body sure this, for sure this time. But right before that, I want to oppose him so much that I jump backwards. His sword cuts through the air and my body flies through the air. The bottomless darkness is behind me. 
a big impact. After that, my body rolls down the stairs. What is it? I hear an unfamiliar voice. Shiro! And I also hear a familiar voice. Saber. My vision is almost gone. I try to lift my body up and fall onto the steps. Please, hold on, Shiro! You were pushed down the steps with this wound! Is it Saber? Saber, Saber supports my body while she talks with urgency. But that's bad. I don't know who it is, but there's another, 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 but there's another servant here. She'll get attacked without being able to defend if she's so worried about me. It, it's fine, Saber. Be quiet. We will make it. With your healing powers, if we return home right away. She must have realized after saying that much. Saber turns back to the servant, still supporting me. Assassin, why did you not attack me? That would be too rude. Nobody can pick a flower that only appears for an instant. Saber tilts her head in wonder, unable to understand her enemy's intention. I was charmed by your face. Your fighting face was nice, but your tense face is beautiful as well. I had to admire it. Is it a kimono? The traditionally dressed servant turns his back. This is enough for tonight. Leave Saber. What? Are you going to let us go, assassin? Yes. If you promise to continue this battle someday, I will let you go. You cannot fight to your satisfaction like this. That is not my wish. Saber glares at Assassin. An Assassin stares calmly at Saber. The breathtaking, the breathtaking stare down continues for less than 10 seconds. I understand, Assassin. I shall settle this match someday. That is a good response. I'll be waiting, King of Knights. Saber goes down the steps with me in her arms. But... I see the knight. Do we not get like an inter- I was expecting like after Shiro got slashed that we'd get an interlude for like their fight. I mean, I guess we already got like what their fight would kind of be in the fate route. But it's just weird because they had their fat fight. And again, I keep comparing it to the anime, but that's just because like I've already seen the anime of UBW. So I'm kind of expecting like, you know, like differences from that. I'm like intrigued by, you know what I mean? Um, So it's just weird. That that it didn't show their fight at all. It's it's weird. Anyways, I see the knight in red running down the wait. Saber goes down the steps with me in her arms, but I see the knight in red running down from the mountain, determined not to let me go. Harcher, Saber says so in wonder. He said that he will kill only when he swears to kill. Then there's no way Archer will let me go. If he used his swords to kill me, I'm sure he will kill me here no matter what. His red f robe, his red robe flutters like a wing. It doesn't matter if Saber's here or not. Archer jumps down and slashes a sword at me. Swords clash. The swords attack with lightning speed. The intercept intercepting blades parries Archer's attack and goes for his neck. Dude, I will say though, freaking this part in the anime is sick. Just like the ki spinning camera angle around Assassin and Archer when all this happens, so clean. Assassin, you. Archer twists his body and lands back down. The knight, in re the, the knight in red cannot come down the steps being blocked off by the servant in a kimono. Are you going to get in my way, samurai? Archer readies his twin swords and, face servant, and faces servant assassin. Assassin readies his swords as if nothing has happened. That is my line. Are you going to get in my way when I have told them I will let them go? He says so with delight. I don't know what he's thinking, but he must really be letting us go. In any event, my role is to guard this gate. I won't let you through alive, nor will I let you out alive. I let you go on your own way- go on in- I let you go on your way in, but it is a different story on your way out. Your head is not elegant, but I shall accept it for tonight. His intent to kill leaks out. Assassin's intent to kill is as sharp as his longsword. It's not overbearing like the ones Archer and Saber have, but an enmity, enmity sharpened to the extreme is going for the enemy's neck. Well said, a mere tool of caster that could not even hurt Saber is... Well said, a mere tool of caster that could not even hurt Saber is going to fight me. That goes for you as well. I sent you to surprise that fox, but I am disappointed that you came back for your own safety. They only confront each other for a short while. They attack each other with amazing techniques. I'm fascinated by the scene. 
To be honest, I can't understand Assassin's technique. Even though my experienced eyes, even for even to my experienced eyes, it's way too fast and too sharp. But that's why I'm fascinated by his technique. The dancing twin swords. Archers defending assassins in comprehensible attacks with a technique I might not be I might be able to acquire. To be honest, you could say I admire it. He was fighting off assassins' demonic technique with techniques only trained by his will and not his natural talent. Damn, it's natural that he's strong. Strength unlike Tosaka or Saber. All the training he went through because he's not extraordinary. He probably had nothing. That's why he took the small thing he had, trained with all his might, and got it to that level. Shiro, let us go now. We have to treat your body. I come back to reality with Saber's voice. We leave the Ryoto Temple with Saber carrying me. The clashing of Assassin and Archer can still be heard behind us. Okay. And with that, um, you know, all these scenes, like, every, like, good point to cut off is always 15 minutes long. Which is very convenient. It's just so convenient. Because, again, that's the range I want to be in is, like, 15 to, like, 20-ish minutes for episodes in general. Um, and I don't mind them going longer when I have, when I'm not so far behind on uploading. Um, but with this, like, what I'm trying to do, it's so perfect. So, so perfect. Anyways, with that being said... I'll see all you beautiful peeps in the next one. Bye bye Okay, we be back in the last one. We, uh, far art, uh, arch I keep messing up. For some reason, I can't say caster or archer. It's just... <laughs> Anyways, um... She left. <laughs> I'm so bad at intros. I'm so bad at doing these now. It's been so long. How long has it been? I think I finished Resident Evil 2 and 3 remake. I finished the rest of Resident Evil 8 that I hadn't finished. Then I played all of Sonic Frontiers and the Resident Evil 8 DLC. All in the time between, like, between the last time I recorded this. I'm so bad at it now. Anyways, Castro has disappeared. Only Archer and I remain here. His figure just gets on my nerves. Archer has saved me twice already. Castro would have taken my command spell without him. I'm sure I would have died from that reign of light. But this is different. I can't forgive him for letting Castro go. Archer, why did you let Castro go? It's because now is not the time to go fight her. Even if I did attack her, she would have just run away. Don't tell me you did not see her teleport. That's certainly true. We wouldn't be able to get Castro if she really wanted to get away. After all, this is her territory. It's that witch. Even if she may have been weak, I'm sure she had at least one or two more tricks left up her sleeve. It seems you understand now. If we want to defeat Castro, we have to defeat her master. Even if she can teleport away, she will eventually disappear if we defeat her, ma if we defeat her master. Going after the master and not the servant. That's the correct and the safest. Th that's the correct and the safest approach to the Holy Grail War. I know that, but you're going to let her get away. The in the incidents in town are all her doing. There will be more victims until we stop Caster. I can't ignore her and let her be. Why? It's not something that is harmful to you. Actually, I'd like for her to continue. Caster will keep up sucking magical energy and eventually defeat Berserker. We can defeat Caster after that. Rena and I can defeat Caster, but not Berserker. I'll let Caster do as she wishes until she defeats Berserker. My body heats up. I get so pissed off that I want to punch Archer. Don't be ridiculous. Tosaka won't do such a thing. You're right. That's why I want Caster to do so as fast as possible. We can't avoid fighting if Reen finds Caster. It would be ideal if Caster can defeat Berserker right before that happens. I don't know how many people will be sacrificed, but it should be cheap if Berserker can be defeated. Humans die anyway. It will not change the ultimate result no matter how they die. Caster's too re reserved. She should not take the. She should not only take their magical energy, but their lives as well. It'll be easier for me to fight if everybody in this town dies. My master's too optimistic. If that happens, I'm sure she'll do anything to win. The knight in red states with a smile. He says it with the light, with the pe with, that the people are here are only a bother. He's saying the same thing Caster said. Oh, I think I know that Rain's the type that is concerned for, with... Oh, I think you know that Rain's the type that, that is concerned with formality. 
She's great as a Magus, but she's not dirty enough as a master. I wouldn't be this troubled if she would be more like Haster. You. I punch at Archer's face. Of course it does not hit as Archer avoids it without trouble. What are you doing? I thought we were cooperating. Shut up. I'm not like you. I can't sacrifice people around me to win. I feel the same way, Hemiashiro. But you cannot save everyone. For example, the damage will extend beyond this town if Castor obtains the Holy Grail. That goes for Iliasfil and the other masters. As far as I know, you and Rain are the only masters that will not use the Holy Grail for your own good. Therefore, there will be more victims unless we win the Holy Grail War. In that case, we will sacrifice the people in this town for our benefit. It will be exactly as you want if the damage reduced, is reduced as a result. My head is numb. He doesn't even need to tell me that. One cannot save everyone. Kuritsugu always said that, so I shouldn't feel anything even if he says so, but it just pisses me off. You said you do not want to, want to involve innocent people, right? Then accept it. Nobody can be saved if you try to save everybody. As Castor said, we are similar, unfortunately. We would have to cooperate if we do not want any victims. No, I won't cooperate with you. I will never accept you. I see. You only trust Reen after all. I turn my back to Archer. I'm different from him. If I can't ignore Castor, there's only one thing I need to do. Do not tell me you'll go after Castor. I ignore him and keep walking. I'm heading inside the temple. Since this is Castor's territory, her since this is Castor's territory, her workshop has to be inside the temple somewhere. I can't believe it. You cannot match Castor by yourself. You should stop if you don't want to die. Archer follows me, as if he has more to say. Man, are you going to throw away the life that I've saved? I don't mind, but at least thank me before you die. I helped you out of kindness. I won't ask you to treat me like your savior, but at least thank me like a friend. Man, he's really getting on my nerves. Shut up. I won't feel any friendship towards you. Just go back to Tosaka's place. I won't ask for your help, even if you offer it to me. I look away and walk towards the temple again. There... I see. Good thing you don't like me. A chilling intent to kill comes from behind me. What? I jump back as I turn around. At the same time, Archer swings his sword. I'm cut at my shoulder. My blood comes flowing out and my consciousness will fade if I let my guard down. The pain is so sharp that it feels like my body is burning. I back up with wobbling steps. It's not to run away. I just don't have any power, so my feet move back to try to keep my body upright. Y you I missed, huh? It must have been my mistake in letting out my intent to kill. Or it must have been your cleverness in jumping back instantly. Well, I don't care either way. Archer walked towards, walks towards me with a sword wet with my blood. I'll be killed. I feel that I'll be killed, so I move my feet in desperation. The temple's exit. I slowly retreat, trying to make my way to the mountain gate. He must know this is a fatal wound. Archer walks towards me without hurry. My mind's fading. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm heading to the mountain gate. I don't know why I was attacked. My mind is flowing out with, along with my blood. Maybe I'm still conscious because of the swords he's holding. The white sword short, short sword. The plain swords are captivating my eyes, and they are stopping me from closing them. But it comes to an end. The mountain gate is beyond me when I realize. Even though the steps are somewhere behind me, I can't even turn around. It's because Archer will slash. It's because Archer will slash Amyashiro's body in half the moment I turn my back. This is it. Since you do not have a reason to fight, die here. He raises his sword. The white yin sword is raised like a guillotine. What? Reason to fight. That's right. It is only hypocrisy for you to fight for someone else and not yourself. You only wish for peace and not victory. Such a thing does not exist anywhere in this world. What? I oppose Archer's words and my fading consciousness, but my body and mind are about to disappear. Farewell. Drown in your ideals and die. His voice is filled with hatred. He swings the yin sword, Bakuya. He aims for the wound on my shoulder to cut my body sure this, for sure this time. But right before that, I want to oppose him so much that I jump backwards. 
His sword cuts through the air and my body flies through the air. The bottomless darkness is behind me. A big impact. After that, my body rolls down the stairs. What is it? I hear an unfamiliar voice. Shiro! And I also hear a familiar voice. Saber. My vision is almost gone. I try to lift my body up and fall onto the steps. Please, hold on, Shiro! You were pushed down the steps with this wound! Is it Saber? Saber, Saber supports my body while she talks with urgency. But that's bad. I don't know who it is, but there's another, 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 but there's another servant here. She'll get attacked without being able to defend if she's so worried about me. It, it's fine, Saber. Be quiet. We will make it. With your healing powers, if we return home right away. She must have realized after saying that much. Saber turns back to the servant, still supporting me. Assassin, why did you not attack me? That would be too rude. Nobody can pick a flower that only appears for an instant. Saber tilts her head in wonder, unable to understand her enemy's intention. I was charmed by your face. Your fighting face was nice, but your tense face is beautiful as well. I had to admire it. Is it a kimono? The traditionally dressed servant turns his back. This is enough for tonight. Leave Saber. What? Are you going to let us go, assassin? Yes. If you promise to continue this battle someday, I will let you go. You cannot fight to your satisfaction like this. That is not my wish. Saber glares at Assassin. An assassin stares calmly at Saber. The breathtaking the breathtaking stare down continues for less than ten seconds. I understand, Assassin. I shall settle this match someday. That is a good response. I'll be waiting, King of Knights. Saber goes down the steps with me in her arms. But I see the knight. Do we not get, like, an inter- I was expecting, like, after Shiro got slashed that we'd get an interlude for, like, their fight. I mean, I guess we already got, like, what their fight would kind of be in the fate route. But it's just weird, because they had their fa fight, and again, I keep comparing it to the anime, but that's just because, like, I've already seen the anime of UBW. So I'm kind of expecting, like, you know, like, differences from that I'm, like, intrigued by, you know what I mean? Um, so it's just weird that that it didn't show their fight at all it's it's weird anyways i see the knight in red running down the wait saber goes down the steps with me in her arms but i see the knight in red running down from the mountain determined not to let me go archer saber says so in wonder he said that he will kill only when he swears to kill then there's no way archer will let me go if he used his swords to kill me i'm sure he will kill me here no matter what his red f robe, his red robe flutters like a wing. It doesn't matter if Saber's here or not. Archer jumps down and slashes a sword at me. Swords clash. The swords attack with lightning speed. The intercept intercepting blades parries Archer's attack and goes for his neck. Dude, I will say though, freaking this part in the anime is sick. Just like the spinning camera angle around Assassin and Archer when all this happens, so clean. Assassin, you. Archer twists his body and lands back down. The knight, in the, the knight in red cannot come down the steps being blocked off by the servant in a kimono. Are you going to get in my way, samurai? Archer readies his twin swords and, face servant and faces servant assassin. Assassin readies his swords as if nothing has happened. That is my line. Are you going to get in my way when I have told them I will let them go? He says so with delight. I don't know what he's thinking, but he must really be letting us go. In any event, my role is to guard this gate. I won't let you through alive, nor will I let you out alive. I let you go on your own way go on in I let you go on your way in, but it is a different story on your way out. Your head is not elegant, but I shall accept it for tonight. His intent to kill leaks out. Assassin's intent to kill is as sharp as his longsword. It's not overbearing like the ones Archer and Saber have, but an enmity, enmity sharpened to the extreme is going for the enemy's neck. Well said, a mere tool of caster that could not even hurt Saber is... Well said, a mere tool of caster that could not even hurt Saber is going to fight me. That goes for you as well. I sent you to surprise that fox, but I am disappointed that you came back for your own safety. 
They only confront each other for a short while. They attack each other with amazing techniques. I'm fascinated by the scene. To be honest, I can't understand Assassin's technique. Even though my experienced eyes, even for even to my experienced eyes, it's way too fast and too sharp. But that's why I'm fascinated by his technique. The dancing twin swords. Archers defending assassins in comprehensible attacks with a technique I might not be I might be able to acquire. To be honest, you could say I admire it. He's fighting off assassin's demonic technique with techniques only trained by his will and not his natural talent. Damn, it's natural that he's strong. Strength unlike Tosaka or Saber. All the training he went through because he's not extraordinary. He probably had nothing. That's why he took the small thing he had, trained with all his might, and got it to that level. Shiro, let us go now. We have to treat your body. I come back to reality with Saber's voice. We leave the Ryoto Temple with Saber carrying me. The clashing of Assassin and Archer can still be heard behind us. Okay. And with that... Um... You know, all these scenes, like, every, like, good point to cut off is always 15 minutes long. Which is very convenient. It's just so convenient. Because, again, that's the range I want to be in is, like, 15 to, like, 20-ish minutes for episodes in general. Um, I don't mind them going longer when I have, when I'm not so far behind on uploading. Um, but with this, like, what I'm trying to do, it's so perfect. So, so perfect. Anyways, with that being said, I'll see all you beautiful peeps in the next one. Bye bye I we back. Also, I was thinking about, like, how much story is left, and I'm like, could we be ending this in, like, 30 parts? 30 to 40 parts is what I was thinking about last night, or, like... Now, that sounds like a lot, but considering the fate route was 77, 78 parts, um, ending in 30 to 40 more is not too, met, is not a lot, it, comparatively. So, anyways, let's get into it. The bell rings to signal the start of the fifth period. But what are we doing? Drinking hot coffee here like this. By the way, I went and bought the coffee in a flash. There's still five minutes until class starts, right? I think it won't take you five minutes to go to the store on the first floor and come back. It's because of the demonic request made by Tosaka. So, how is it for you? Um, you started learning it from... Learning it from about eight years ago. Huh? Oh, when I started learning magic? Yeah, it's been about that long. My father finally started teaching me after I begged him for two years. So, a total of about eight years, huh? Your dad sure did an incomplete job. If he was going to teach you, he should have done something from the time you were born. Your body was already too mature eight years ago. He couldn't put a magic crest on you, nor could he, nor could he tamper with your body. Oh, so you can't get a magic crest Im implanted when you're older. Okay. Mm. I don't remember if they talked about it in the fate route. I just remember like always wondering, like, if Kuritsuko was going to teach him magic anyways, why not give Shiro... His magic crest. That just that just makes sense to me. But that actually makes a lot of sense. Tosaka says dangerous things with a serious face. Well, I know this is her part of her. Well, I know this is her part of her as a. I know this is her part of her as a magus. Uh, okay. Yeah, but as I told you before, my father never intended to teach me magic. That's why he didn't go through the proper steps like you did. Actually, what do you mean by doing something when you're born? Um, it's just like it sounds. The magic crest of a family becomes larger the more history there is behind the family. A magic crest is a magic circuit taking shape, so engraving it into someone causes the human body to reject it and causes serious pain. So we implant it a bit by bit from the time we're born to the mo to moderate the pain. We also drink bitter her herbs and ground bones to create ew ground bones Ugh. to create resistance in our bodies. Well, you don't, need to, you don't need to worry too much since it doesn't concern you as a magic user, and it's troublesome if you start copying it and do reckless things. I don't intend to. But are you alright? It sounds pretty bad from the way you said it. I can't put it into words properly. I don't know what you would call a normal Magus teacher, but I felt the pressure when I went to Tosaka's house. A family that passes on a long history. Children that have the duty to succeed from the time they're born. Schedule secluded from the normal world, disregarding their will. I bite my lip, trying irresponsibly to think how long and heavy it is. 
Oh, I see. You're worrying about such a thing. Uh, what's that? What's with that meaningful face? I'm not worried at all, you know. That was a terrible read, but it's fine. Of course not. There's nothing for you to be worried about. I did it because I wanted to, and I don't regret it one bit. Isn't it the same for you as well? Why are you asking me? Am I the same? Me and Tosaka? Jeez, you really don't get anything about yourself, huh? Look, my training was indeed hard, but I never thought about running away. I'm saying that it must be the same for you. Oh, yeah, you're right. But I never asked you to ask to do anything as hard as you're doing. Don't say stupid things. It's crazy to start learning magic after nine years of normal life. I don't know what your daily routines are, but I'm sure it's da but I'm sure it's a dangerous one. It must be so dangerous that you might lose your life if you fail. Oh. Well, that's only because I'm an amateur. That's not supposed to be that dangerous. I can't compare it to you, Tosaka. Right, I can't compare myself to you either. Training in magic is like that. The only common thing is that we're all putting our lives on the line. There is a difference in how much we put on the line, but it just means how much we're willing to ri how much risk we're willing to take, right? In that regard, your training is much harsher than mine. I've never trained in a way that might kill me. First of all, I don't fail. Wow, you just declared it. She casually says something that hurts me. In other words, she says she doesn't understand how we feel when we fail. Hey, don't sulk, I praised you. <laughs> it doesn't make me happy when the person that get that always gets the perfect scores tell me I did well this time. I didn't say this time. The point is that the training is hard, but it's not harsh. That's why I've never run away from it, and I'll continue training. The same goes for you, right? Hmm. Tosaka said it was hard, but not harsh. I think she's right. I did not feel that my training was harsh, nor severe. No, I didn't have any composure to think about such a thing. I just wanted to catch up to Kuritsugu. I, I want to be like Kuritsugu someday. I kept on training to become the superhero that Kuritsugu couldn't be. Come to think of it, most of my memories are about training in the shed. But I never regretted it. I always believe that it's the most important thing for me. I see, you're right. Now that you mention it, I guess I did my share, huh? Yep. You came to where you were today with your own skills, so have more confidence in yourself. Tosaka tells me to be proud. I'm a bit embarrassed. It's more embarrassing if she gets happy about it, as if she's a, as if it's her own accomplishment. Well, let's talk about the serious stuff now that this conversation's over. We have to know about each other's strengths if we're going to be cooperating. Strengths? Oh, you mean the magic we can use? Huh. That's something you know already. You know what I use, right? Yes, your magic is strengthening, right? I won't say it's rare, but I don't think many Magi use it as their primary magic. I've been wondering, but why are you that particular about using the strengthening magic? No, that's the only thing I can do. I tried a lot, but strengthening is the only thing I can do. The rest is basic stuff like making a blueprint and such. The, this isn't something we have to talk about now. Oh, he didn't say that out loud. I was wondering, like, what the frick do you mean by that? I see. I guess mine is conversion. What does that mean? Accumulation, flow, and transformation of power. That's my basic power. And I also know the popular spells. I can manage to make a boundary field that's about the size of a classroom. Conversion of power. That's the most basic and all, and the most all around. All round. In other words, she can put magical energy into any container and transform it. I see. I'm happy that you're telling me this. But is it really alright to tell me about your magic? You told me about yours before, right? It's not fair if I hide mine. Saying so, Tos Tosaka holds out her left arm. I've shown you before, but this is my magic crest. The technique of conversion is what's been passed down to the, to the Tosaka family. We're good at shifting our powers or, s or someone else's. Magical energy disappears when we take it out of our body, right? We can create it. We cannot create anything special with just magical energy. We execute the equation called magic using a magical energy before it disappears. That's why pure magical energy that's not part of a spell is hard to move around. She stops there and takes a small rock out of her pocket. Is it a jewel? The transparent polyhedron reminds me of a kaleidoscope. <gasps> that's a CE from FGO! I love that one! As an exception, I can store my magical energy in other objects. No, not only my magical energy, but I can also store others' magical energy. And although it'll be difficult, I can store things other than magical energy as well. 
and the most compatible storage space is a jewel. You know that jewels are places that easily store thoughts, a prison that stops flow, right? Additionally, crystals that have been in the ground for a long time carry strong natural spirits. Such jewels can become a simple magic crest when a magical energy is poured into them. Well, since it's a jewel, it'll break once the sword of magical energy is released. Tosaka shrugs and, put away and puts away the jewel. That's a waste. By it breaking, you mean it'll go away once you use it, right? Do you have any... Do you, ha do you have to replenish an expensive thing like a jewel every time you use it? Yep. That's why we're always out of money. Magi of the Tosaka family start by making money once they succeed. I see. Yeah, people have a, have different problems, Tosaka. Ugh. She looks away as if she said too much. Yeah. I think so every time I see her, but I think Tosaka is rather foolish. Oh, well, that's mean. The fifth period is about to end. Tosaka's explanation has ended, so I decided to ask her about another Magus about Shinji. Wait, what? That that sentence did not work in my brain. So I decided to ask her about another Magus, about Shinji. Okay. Hey, Tosaka. I heard Shinji's family, the Mato family, has a family of Magi. Did you know that? Yes, I did. But my dad told me the Mato family declined in the past few decades. He said that the Mato family doesn't have the bloodline of Magi now. That's true. That's why I was surprised to hear that Shinji became a master. I see, so she did know, huh? That's to be expected because she supervises this land and knows about all the Magi with the history that live here. So she did know about that Shinji's a master. Wait. Hold on! Tosaki, you knew that Shinji's a master? I'm sorry. I guess my th I guess my thinking could I'm sorry. I guess my thinking he couldn't be a master backfired. Tosaka says so as, as if it's nothing. That's strange. She's looking for the third master at our school, but it seems like she's not considering Shinji to be a problem at all. Tosaka, Shinji's a master, right? Yes, but that shouldn't be a pro such a problem. He doesn't have any magical energy, so he shouldn't be able to do anything outrageous. Our enemy is a master hiding at our school. Shinji doesn't have the presence of a master, so he's not the one we're looking for. Then does that mean there's actually four masters at our school? I would think so. Well, I don't think Shinji would interfere since I told him not to do anything. She makes another worrisome statement. No, first of all, how did Tosaka find out that Shinji's a master? Tosaka, can you tell me what happened this morning in detail? There's nothing to talk much to talk about since Shinji was the one who told me. He asked me if I wanted to cooperate with him since he's a master as well. I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this, but I can't stop her here. So what happened after that? I declined, of course, but he still kept on being persistent, so I unintentionally said that I don't need him since I have you, Shiro. Tosaka laughs as if it's a funny story. Oh, that would definitely send, um, the type of person Shinji is over the edge. That must be why Shinji was acting strange today, but... So what will you do now? Are you going to ignore Shinji? Shinji's the one that set up that boundary field at our school, right? What? Tosaka freezes. I thought so. She didn't know Shinji made the boundary field, huh? You're wrong, Tosaka. Shinji is certainly not a Magus, but he's the one that set up the boundary field. I think his servant excels at magic like Caster. Tosaka grows pale. Tosaka, you didn't know? I did. I knew the boundary field was made by a servant, but... She couldn't make the connection to Shinji, huh? I recall how Tosaka was acting until now. I bet Tosaka was so worried about what happened last night that she couldn't think about Shinji. It must be the biggest mistake she's made in her life. Crap, Shinji might be... She gets up instantly and glares at the exit. At that instant. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! That was cool, what the freak? The disorder is revealed as if it was carefully timed. I like to imagine Shinji's just sitting on, like the entrance to the roof and it's just like all right i'm waiting i need i need them to put it together so i can spook them real good with my timing boundary field the sky is tinted red i read that so scared my body is numbed just by breathing in the red air surrounding the school it doesn't affect magi that can create magical energy inside their bodies but people with scarce magical energy will faint just by breathing it in and should eventually die tosaka i know let's hurry hurry shiro the school is red all around. The hallway is red like blood. 
The air is red like blood. The thick air sticking to my skin makes me hallucinate that this might just be a bad dream. Breath filled with hatred escapes my closed mouth. I pour reasoning onto my confused and heated brain as coolant and try to grasp the situation. I run into the classroom, the one nearest the stairs. Tosaka stops for a second, hesitant to enter this disastrous scene. I understand how she feels. I don't want to encounter such things, such a thing either. They're still alive. It doesn't mean we won't. They're still alive. It doesn't mean we won't make it. I go near a student and check his pulse and breathing. There's no conscious person in this classroom. Everybody, including the students at their desks and the teacher up front, are down on the floor now. Most of the students are unconscious, convulsing, foaming at the mouth like it's a bad joke. But the few others, the few students have other things happening to them. Their skin is melting. The human skin is slowly melting like mud sliding off a plaster. The way the melting skin drips onto the floor makes, a pic makes me picture a giant stomach. Ugh. Tosok is astonished by the horrific scene. There's no time to think. To resolve this situation as fast as we can, I should. Um. Um. This is like my bad endings things, right? I, I looked at this like yesterday when I ended, like stopped recording after I think I did like the sixth episode of the day. I was like, oh yeah, I left all this space open so then I could have bad ending slots. Um. Yeah, I think that this is a good place to end the episode. And in the next one, spoiler alert, I'm going to use the command spell to call for Saber. Because why would I not do that? <laughs> uh, so yeah, with that being said, I will see all you guys in the next one. Bye bye Alright, we back. Um, yeah, we're, ca we're calling for Saber. Uh, the other thing is obviously we go out and, spoiler, Ryder kills us. Um, so, that's what I imagine, imagine would happen, at least. That's the best choice we have. If Shinji's servants created this boundary field, I just need to call for Saber. Tosaka, I'm calling for Saber. Tell me how to use the command spell. Uh, hold on, if you're gonna call for Saber, I'll also... You used your command spell yesterday, so it's my turn today. We can call for Archer if Saber can't handle the situation by herself. So how do I use the command spell? Concentrate on your left hand. It's better if you close your eyes. Imagine the shape of your command spell and release it. Give an order while you release it, of course. I close my eyes. I can't take my time. I eliminate any thoughts in my head as quickly as I can. Concentrate on my second command spell. Please come. Saber! And I release the command spell without hesitation. My hand burns. At the same time, I feel an unnatural heaviness right beside me, and a knight in silver emerges from the he from the heavy void. Saber! I have come in response to your summons. What is the situation, Master? It is grave enough for you to use your command spell, correct? It's just as it looks. A servant activated this boundary field. I want to remove this boundary field as fast as possible. I understand. I certainly feel the presence of a servant on this floor. This floor? There are servants on the fourth floor? I am sure of it. What about it, Reen? Huh? No, I'm sure that's the case if you say so. But that's too strange. I can feel that the origin of the boundary field is on the first floor. I'm sure your skill to detect a servant is superior to mine. But my skill to detect magic is pretty good too. So you're saying that the servant is on this floor, even though the boundary field was set up on the first floor? Uh, I can't say for sure, but that's what I feel. The source of the boundary field has to be on the first floor. Sorry, my phone just wigged up. Like, I'm literally just like sitting here looking up and my phone is on my desk. That's why you can sometimes hear it when I like I get a text. And it just like turned on, turned off, turned on. I'm like, I've never seen that before. That's slightly concerning. Uh, I can't say for sure, but that's what I feel. The source of the boundary field has to be on the first floor. So there are two alternatives, huh? If Shinji arranged for a servant to come to this floor, one has to be a trap. Everyone in the school will pay will pay the price if we make the wrong choice. Oh shoot, is there another choice we have to make? Reen, where's Archer? We can make a better analysis if, is he, if he is here. He's not answering me. This boundary field has us totally cut off from the outside world. 
I have to use the command spell, or we'll have to wait for him to detect this and come here. Kosaka and Saber glare at each other. But now's not a time to be doing so. Think. Tosaka doesn't have her composure. The best thing we can do right now is... Alright. We'll go search the first floor. I feel sorry for letting Saber fight by herself, but she should be able to take the servant on by herself. Saber, I'll leave the servant up to you. Can you fight by yourself? Of course. What will you do, Shiro? I'm going down to the first floor. I might be unre unreliable by myself, but I'm sure I'll be alright if, to if Tosaka comes with me. Besides, only Tosaka can detect magical energy. Let's go to together, Tosaka. Uh, yeah, of course. I was going to go by myself if you didn't ask. Then it's decided. So now... Hey, what are you doing? Are you insane breaking a chair like that? We need a weapon, right? I can only use, use strengthening magic, so I need something I can strengthen. I swing the leg of the chair. It's exactly like the time I got attacked by Tosaka. I easily succeed at the strengthening magic, and I also take another leg while I'm at it. Shiro, I feel weak. a weak presence outside. It seems we are surrounded. Surrounded? By what? I do not know. We, o we only need to go out and check. You're right. Can you take the lead? Of course. It is my duty to be your shield. Saber runs out into the hallway. Let's go, Tosaka. We'll go down to the first floor. The instant we go out into the hallway, we find out what's surrounding us. Are those bones? The things made out of in inhuman bones are coming in great numbers from the other side of the hallway. What is that, Tosaka? Golems. It's a kind of familiar. Just come this way. Saber will take care of them. They won't be a match for Saber no matter what how many hundreds of them there are. I'll leave it to you, Saber. I run to the stairs. The sound of Saber destroying the bones echoes behind me. We run down the stairs. It's not that far to the first floor, but... Damn you! I smash the blocking bone creature with a chair leg in my hand. This is the third one already. It might be because I saw the disaster, but I don't care about confronting these monsters. In other words, my mind is numb. My proper emotions such as hatred, fear, sadness, and cowardice have all frozen up. The only thing filling my head is the desire to get to the first floor. I take the two swords in my hands and swing them like I saw him use. Hey, don't go that way! I smash the fourth bone creature. The bone creature that tried to attack Tosaka from the side gets smashed and smacked into a wall. Hey, are you alright, Tosaka? I call out to her while fending off the attackers. Good, Tosaka isn't hurt at all. Tosaka, where's the origin, origin of the boundary field? Uh, it, it's right there, in that classroom. The place Tosaka points at is about 10 meters ahead. There are f a few more bone creatures that followed us down the stairs, but we don't have time to deal with them. I parry the attacking sword with the weapon in my right hand. I attack the defenseless body with the weapon in my left hand. I destroy the fifth bone creature, but there are more of them. There are at least there are at least ten more bone creatures in the hallway. Damn, they're persistent. Why don't you guys run out? I retreat a bit. The chair legs in my hands are worn down. Even though I strengthened them, they are originally only stainless steel. I don't know if they'll hold out even against one more attack. Get back, Shiro! Huh? I'm surprised, but I back up like she tells me to. At that instant, Tosaka jumps out in front of me and throws a jewel at the bone creatures. She fills my vision with pure white. That must have been some sort of release. That must have been some sort of a release spell. There is no sign of destruction in the hallway, and only the scattered remains of the bone creatures are there. Thanks, you helped me out. I really used the toe pass, so it took me some time to get it ready. I would have been overwhelmed if you weren't here with me. She lowers her shoulders in relief, but she only does so for an instant and glares at the classroom. Let's go, Shinji should be there. Tosaka runs to the classroom. I follow her and step into the red classroom. It is a pure hell here. The air in this classroom cannot be called gas anymore. The vaporized blood dyes, dyes the eyes of the beholder like paint. Voices of anguish can be heard from all over. 
This is the origin of the boundary field, the place where absorption is the strongest. The students lying on the floor are totally different from the students on the fourth floor. The moanings I hear are just hallucinations. The students have pale faces and they don't move as, move as if they are dolls made from wax. It reminds me of a mountain of corpses, trash thrown away in a wasteland. Tosaka is staring at the scene, her legs shaking. I hear a chattering sound. It must be to suppress her emotions. Tosaka's teeth chatter as she beholds the scene in horror. She moves her shaking legs and steps forward. Between the desks, there's a living person there. On his butt amongst all the fallen students, Mato Shinji is looking up at Tosaka. Shinji, you! A stern voice. He must have reacted to the voice. Shinji lets out a strange cry and jumps away from Tosaka. I'm not going to accept any excuses. I'll have you atone for what you've done, no matter what. Tosaka goes near Shinji. No, 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 no. It's not me. It's not me. It's not me. It's not me. Shinji shakes his head and retreats to the wall. It's not me? How can you say that? Just go ahead and stop the boundary field. If you won't, I can blow off that face of yours and... Uh, no, I said it's not me. It's not me. It's not me. It's not me that killed her. This is strange. Shinji is running away from Tosaka, but he's not looking at her. He's looking at the floor right by our feet. By our feet? I look down. There are only students that fall unconscious. There isn't anything else. Tosaka? I call out to her and point to the place. Huh? A stunned voice. She must have forgotten her anger towards Shinji. The instant she sees the thing on the floor, Tosaka's intent to kill fades away. My breath stops. The thing on the floor is completely dead. The long purple hair. The thing covered in black cloths is the servant that attacked me. She's... dead. Tosaka's voice contains no emotion. It's not me, I didn't do it. I executed the boundary field and nobody was able to move but Ryder. Ryder was... The black servant Ryder was killed in one blow. What kind of weapon was it? And how was she killed? Only one blow against a servant? Only aiming for the neck and killing the enemy by ripping the neck apart. Can't even imagine how it was done. It must have caught her by surprise, but the enemy must have been skilled to cut her neck in one blow. No, I can't call it cut. It looks like something put a jack in there and ripped off the meat and bone by crushing it. Ryder disappears from this world. The red world disappears at the same time. It seems the boundary field was created by this servant as I thought. But... Shinji, who did this? As Tosaka closes in, Shinji slowly retreats towards the hallway. I told you that there's another master at our school, right? It's your fault for ignoring my warning and causing this panic. <laughs> it seems you've survived by watching your servant die without helping her. But it's your turn next if you saw the enemy. I don't know what kind of master he or she is, but I'm sure you're next. Th that can't be true. I'm not my servant anymore. I'm not a master anymore. So you guys should be the next target. Yeah, well, you're right. There's no harm in letting you be, even if you have your command spells. I might be a it might be annoying to have you run around, but a harmless insect can't kill humans. Yeah, I won't kill you here, depending on your response. Insect? I'm a harmless insect? You should thank me for not comparing you to a noxious insect. I told you that you're harmless since Mato Shinji is fit to be neither a magus nor a master. So tell me if you saw it. That's the only value in you right now. Shinji retreats being pushed by Tosaka's pressure. I don't know if Tosaka's serious or just threatening, but... She's seriously angry. She has lost her calmness after seeing the tragic scene. Come on! What kind of servant killed your servant, Shinji? Uh, I don't know! You idiot! You're the one who should be cowering in fear! You guys are the next target! You! Shinji runs out into the hallway and Tosaka starts to go after him. But Tosaka stops as if she realizes something. No, that's wrong. It's not that she noticed something. She's just watching the students on the floor and biting her lips in vexation. Her face is that of Tosaka Rin, but her knees are shaking and her eyes are wavering as if they are about to cry. I don't know if she's filled with sorrow or vexation, but that tells me she is firm, can do everything, and is a mature magus, but she's just a girl of her age on the inside. 
It's fine, Tosaka. Everyone's still breathing. It's not over yet. Huh? Everyone's breathing? Yeah, it might be hard, but take a good look. Everyone's alive. The boundary field is gone, so all I have to do now is call for help. So, should we call for an ambulance or something else in this a case like this? Should we contact the church if the wounds are caused by magic? I ask her in a calm voice. They must have gone back to gone back her reasoning as she slaps her own face with both her hands. We can contact the church. Kiri will take care of the rest if you explain the situation to him. All right, let's contact him right away. Nodding, Tosaka runs out into the hallway. She must be heading to the office. There's a phone there, so she should be able to make a call right away. Okay. And with that being said, I will see all you guys in the next one. Bye bye We finished contacting the- what? Well, I really just started going into it. Uh, yeah, we're back. We finished contacting the church and go outside. I did not mean to hit that. It'd be troublesome for us if we were the only ones unharmed. So Kodamine ordered us to pretend that we were weren't that we weren't here today. Then Saber, were you fighting Castor? Yes, it was ser it was servant Castor that was controlling those golems. What does my phone want now? Stop stop it, leave me alone. I defeated Castor, but I am sure that was only her shadow. I see. So it means Castor was controlling those bone creatures from the Ryudo Temple. Then Castor was the one who attacked Shinji's servant. Then the fourth master at her school would be Castor's master. Considering Castor, it's possible that she's used Shinji to lure Ryder into a trap. I believe so. According to you, Ryder had her head cut off in one blow. Imagine that she was held constrained and that she was killed without resisting. That's troublesome, but we found out Castor's master is at my school. It wasn't completely meaningless. I turned to Tosaka for confirmation. Tosaka only stares back at me silently. Since we left the classroom, Tosaka has only been looking at me, as if she wants to say something. Tosaka, come on, say it if you want to say something. I feel weird if you're quiet. Um, in fear of not knowing when I'll get hit from behind. Tosaka stares at me for a while, and with a serious face. Emiya, you're pretty calm. It's a bit unexpected. Says this. I'm not calm. My head got all boiled up too much. We both lost our composure out of anger. But you figured out everyone's condition. I couldn't do that. Oh, that? It's nothing much. I was only able to tell since I'm used to seeing dead bodies. Huh? Used to seeing dead bodies? We walked away while we talk. This place will get rowdy once the ambulances arrive. We'll go to the back gate through the woods and get out of the school from there. Then... Oh, I'm surprised Saber's here. As we make our way to the back gate, we run into the late arriving guy. Archer! What were you doing? Coming so late? That was a terrible read. It is obvious, right? I sensed my master's danger and came here. Well, it seems I was too late. If Saber is here and Rina's safe, everything is over already, right? Yes, it's all over already. I'll let you know what happened while you are taking your time, so listen up. Damn. It seems I came at the worst possible time. The two argue, leaving us aside. Well, it's just that Tosaka is yelling at Archer while he's calmly brushing it off. Those two are intimate, as I thought. Rina is angry because she trusts Archer, and Archer is silently listening because he must feel sorry. I know what you want to say, but why are you telling me that, Saber? Well, you had a difficult face, so I merely explained the situation to you. I don't know what's so funny, but Saber's smiling, smiling meaningfully. I like it even less. Fine, fine. I won't worry about style next time. Let's say it's good for now. So, which servant was eliminated? Archer's expression changes. His usual ironic composure disappears, and he looks like a cold warrior now. Servant Rider was eliminated. I don't know how it happened, but she must have been defeated by Castor. By Castor? Then what happened to Castor? Do not tell me she was unwounded. I don't know that either, but Ryder was defeated in one blow, so I think Castor's unwounded. I say so, representing the three of us. Then... <laughs> what a fool. I guess she was all just... I guess she was just all talk. I did not think she would be able to win, but getting defeated with one blow? Man, show some spirit at least to kill your enemy as well. Wait, man, show some spirit to get... To at least kill your enemy as well? 
Has he talked to Ryder? I don't remember. He goes back to his usual manner and insults the now gone Ryder. Archer, Ryder died protecting her master. You don't have any right to call her a fool. <laughs> That's what you have to say? A fool is a fool. If she is to call herself a hero, she should be ashamed that she could not even defeat a single enemy. If she can't do that, she could at least sacrifice her life to kill her enemy. How convenient of you. She was defeated without doing anything because she was in a situation where she was not able to do so. Speaking ill of her defeat, are you really one to call yourself a hero? <laughs> no matter the reason, it makes no difference to the fact that she was defeated badly. Well, it was certainly my mistake to say anything about a hero. The weak will die no matter what, disregarding the, fa disregarding the fact that they may be a hero or not. Heroes not fit for this war should be eliminated early on. Well said. Then will you fight me, Archer? You? This is surprising. I don't know what's got on your nerves, but you're challenging your ally to a fight? But, unfortunately, I am bound by, my, by the command spell not to fight against you two. If you challenge me now, I will only be defeated without resistance, just like Ryder. Is it your way of the knight to fight such an opponent, Saber? The two glare at each other without a word. Stop right there, Archer! Tosaka's quiet voice puts a stop to it. <laughs> this is no time to be fighting with Saber. Ryder is eliminated and a master is gone now. But I'm sure there is more, one more unidentified master hiding at our school. Our cooperation continues until we defeat the master hiding at our school. Or what? Do you want me to use another command spell to order you to not fight Saber? You're right. Saber was so adherent to her principles that I got too caught up making fun of her. I'm sorry, Saber. Please fight me after our cooperation is over. No, it seems I was acting too immature. I'll ignore your comments and defer to Rin. Saber takes a step back while glaring at Archer and stands by my side. Tosaka moves Archer back as well. Well, that's about it. We're still cooperating. It's impossible to do so today, but we can search for Caster's master at school tomorrow. We'll just be maintaining the present state, but is that alright with you? Yeah, so what will you do now? Are you going to go to the Ryoto Temple? Of course not. According to Archer, going to the Ryoto Temple is suicidal. If we want to defeat Caster, we'll have to search for a master first. Fortunately or not, Caster's master is coming to school every day. We should let them be and keep them off guard. Hmm. I try to think how she came to that conclusion. Tosaka knew that there's a master at our school. That must be because there's someone there with magical energy other than Shinji. Since Caster appeared, it must mean that the master at our school is Caster's master. Additionally, Caster's master is coming to school every day for some reason. It means he or she is coming to school every day defenselessly rather than staying at the Ryudo temple under Caster's protection. So, you're going to figure out who the master is and attack the master before they get back to the Ryudo temple? Yep. It seems like Caster's master doesn't know that we're masters. If they knew, they wouldn't come to school, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. Then Caster's master, I hate saying Caster's master, Caster's master, Caster's master. <laughs> Didn't know that Shinji was a master either. I can't come up with an explanation, but that's likely. But such a stupid thing shouldn't be possible considering how good the servant is at magic. Yeah. Even I, who has no knowledge as a master, got this far thanks to Saber. If you have a servant like Caster, I'm sure you wouldn't do something as dangerous as going outside. That's wrong. Your premises are wrong, Green. Archer? I don't think Caster's master has a free will. No, I believe the master thinks he has a free will when, in fact, he is controlled by Caster. That woman is not someone who would be under someone. She would first control her master to do whatever she wishes. Are you saying Caster's master is just a puppet? Either by trickery or removing the memory of a being of being a master? Blah, blah, blah. Hmm, I see it. I see. It is interesting to think that the master is not conscious of the state he or she is in. Originally, a servant cannot do something to its master. The servant cannot exist if it kills its master. In contrast, the master has the command spells. If the servant disobeys, the master can even kill the servant. With that being the case, it is safer to trick your master than to kill him. Tosaka ponders. But I'm not convinced. Really? Caster's doing a lot of evil deeds, right? Can she actually hide it all from her master? Wouldn't the master be more on guards the stronger a servant is? That is not a problem. She can make convenient excuses of her master's... 
She can make convenient excuses for her master's distinguishedly good-natured. Caster's master may be such a may be such a person as well. Hey, why did you look at me when you said that? Well, it's because we have a good example here. The possibility that Caster's master is stupid is not zero. I see. You do have a point, Archer. Hey, why are you agreeing, Saber? All right, I get it. No matter what kind of person Caster's master may be, it's likely that they'll be at school tomorrow. We'll continue to investigate the school, and we'll attack Caster's master as soon as we find him or her. Well, I think that's the appropriate course of action. But how will we look for the master? That'll be today's homework. We'll each go home and think about it. You two are tired anyways, right? I don't want to push you two and have you collapse, so let's call it a day. Uh, no, I'm not that tired. It's still early, so... Hey, Tosaka. Just do as I say! We can't go into school today and we don't have a clue, right? It's meaningless to stay here and most of all, don't you realize Archer's acting strange? Things won't settle down if he stays with you, considering it only happened yesterday. F fine, I'll go home, I'll go home, so... Don't whisper to me from such close range. Then I'll see you tomorrow. I don't think it'll happen again, but be careful during the night. I won't forgive you if Kasher gets control of you again. Ugh, all right, all right, I'll go home. Hm. And thanks for your work today. You're acting just a bit like a master now. Tosaka jumps away from me. Let's go, Archer. I want to seriously inquire about your carelessness after we get home. Oh, well, as I thought. I was thinking how unabusive you were. Hey, now. Do I really have to settle things with you once and for all? Archer and Tosaka leave arguing. We should go home too. I'm a bit tired, so let's have dinner early today. That sounds good. I support that idea, Shiro. We leave the woods quietly, so we won't be seen by anyone. Yeah. I'll pull myself together, go shopping in the so shopping district, make a big dinner, and take a rest. We'll talk about Castor and her master after that. If I have to hear Castor's master, Castor's master one more time, I will... <sighs> Tosaka calls me after dinner. I guess there wasn't as much damage as we thought there would be at school. It must be because the ones who set up the boundary field, Ryder, died quickly. I hear the students that were in the same classroom as Ryder needed to stay in the hospital for a long time, but most students ha just have anemia. School's not going to close down, and we'll just be living. We'll just be having normal classes. And we'll be having classes like normal tomorrow. Shiro, what did Green say? She said school's going to go is go. Blah, 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 blah. She said school's going on as normal, so we'll go to school tomorrow and look for Caster's master. I see. So nobody in that building suffered seriously, except for a few. Oh, I think Fujini's not home because she's busy with a staff meeting or something. That is good. Knowing Taiga, I'm sure she would be sitting at the breakfast table tomorrow like nothing had happened. Yeah, that's a relief for me as well. Well, since her energy is extraordinary, extraordinary. I stopped worrying about her when I heard everyone's all right. Then Shiro, continuing that conversation from earlier, she leans over the table with a serious face. Ugh, so you haven't given up yet? Of course not. I will sleep in your room so we won't repeat last night's mistakes. There is nothing for you to complain about, right? I do not have complaints. I do have complaints. Having Saber sleep in the same room as with me is like telling me to die. Ugh, Shiro. Shiro, first of all, it is your fault for being affected by such a long range hypnotism. I cannot protect you from Castro's magic, so it is natural for me to at least stay in the same room. Magic can be better sensed the closer I am to it. If Castro is going after you, I must sleep close to you. Well, that is a very sound argument, but women scare me. I think that Castro won't use the same strategy since she failed once. I think so, but if I say it to Saber right now... You are too optimistic. You are deceived by a heretic like Caster and insulted by someone with a twisted personality like Archer because you think like that. I bet she would object like that. Are you listening to me, Shiro? I will not listen to excuses at, such as me being a woman. I will be sleeping in your room starting tonight, so please do not run away to the shed, okay? Saber glares at me and makes her declaration. Ugh, so she even anticipated that I was going to run away to the shed. I'll hold my ground and try to get her to agree on a compromise. Alright, I'll have you sleep near me. So you finally accept it, huh? Yes, that is the natural choice for a master. But not in the same room. You know there's an empty room next to mine, right? The one on the other side of the sliding screen? Yes, I know, but what about it? Um, that place should be good enough to protect me while I'm asleep, right? 
No, first of all, the enemy won't come if we're sleeping in the same room. So you should stand by in the next room so that you can surprise attack the enemy when they come for me. Oh, I think this sounds pretty logical. I think that's a terrible decision. That still means Saber would be like... Would have to wake up and notice that they're coming in her sleep. And then attack, so there's like error, like there's room for error. And that error is your death, Shiro. I don't think that's a good plan at all. That's fine, right, Saber? Honestly, I don't know about two people sleeping in, sleeping in that small room. We can't physically fit. I think it's bad for a servant to be the cause of her master's lack of sleep. Well, then sleep in a bigger room. Hmm. You are rather witty tonight, Shiro. Also, if there's a sliding door, you could just have it open. I understand. It sounds like, a, like an excuse to me, but I am fine with that. I will compromise on that plan. Saber reluctantly withdraws. Whew. Good. Man, being a master is hard enough. If I sleep in the same room as Saber on top of that, but my brain will overheat. All right. And with that being said, I think that's a good place to end the episode. With that being said, I will see all of you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.